I feel like artists are going to have to start just in general looking at themselves more like creator first, almost maybe not creator first, music artist second, but maybe it'd been like a little bit of a 50 50. Like I should be looking to make just as much money and flip as many opportunities on my creator side of my brand as I'm looking to do on my music side. Because the reality of it is maybe that your music side may never truly be lucrative enough to compensate you the way you want to be compensated. But the doors that opens up for you in other areas does, right? You got a million followers on Instagram because your song went viral. Now you can afford to charge $30,000, $50,000, or maybe more, probably more than that, right, for an influencer post, right? Music may not have been the thing that directly paid you that much money, but it opened up a lot of doors for you to make more money off of other things around it. Like, look at Drake. Like, we we had the conversation on the last pod about, um, you know, Drake being more into flipping brand deals. And, you know, or we had the conversation about how we don't think bigger artists are as stream focused as like smaller artists are. Like they're not really caring about the revenue because they just need the numbers to flip in the brand deals, right? Drake right. has that that deal with that sports betting company that's probably paying him a shit ton of money. Oh, yeah. So he just needs to keep the perception of, hey, I have fans so that way these other entities will give me a lot of money. And I feel like that's how artists, as much as they probably don't want it to be that way, right? Like every artist in, in their perfect world, everything will be taken care of off of just the music. In the perfect world, or <laughs> not even the perfect world, 10, 20 years ago, because that was the perfect world in almost every music artist had, right? And, yeah. and, and at least from a money perspective, not uh, yeah, 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 I get you. But the reality of it is like, music is, I think, moving away from that because music is starting to get looked at no differently than just like other forms of content that we consume. And your Netflix movies, your YouTube videos, things like that, you're just used to getting for cheap. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're used to getting for cheap. And then those companies find other ways to flip the audience into more lucrative opportunities. And I do think music is moving towards that, where it's like, hey, artists five or 10 years from now, you could have a song with, I don't know, let's say a billion streams on it. And a billion streams might not pay the same as it is paying now, or, you know, well, I guess there weren't streams before now, but. <sighs> Bro, this is why, this is why we have to have that conversation about IP, mm. right? Because you basically just, made artists akin to Netflix, the movies and all the things like that that are coming out. Yeah. So an artist at best is not just, you know, a creator of music. Them themselves is a true legitimate IP that can be monetized mm-hmm. again and again in so many different ways. Yeah. Which brings me to, did you watch the Riri shit? You didn't. I did cool it's all right <laughs> we're not gonna have time to talk about it here anyway and the fourth one ain't great so i'm watching tonight though i swear the fourth, one ain't, the fourth one ain't, you need it but you need to watch both of them because we're gonna do we're gonna talk about it monday or whatever <laughs> uh yeah yeah that one and at least watch three bro because four is gonna be like why why sean got me watching this shit bro why he got me watching this shit so but with that being said though right we talk about the squeeze. I just looked this up because I, I was like, you know what? I bet the other side is getting cut through as well. Inflation cuts into merch and vinyl profits, even as sales skyrocket. It's nothing worse when you're making more money and less money at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Such a conundrum. It, 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 it sucks, man. It sucks. And that's why, you know, Sam talks about the... Um, it's like the Zen, the happy, the Zen happiness. Remember, he went to like forty million dollars of sales a year, mm. but found that he was making less money, and he could have figured a problem out there. But he said, "No, I'm just gonna make six, ten mil, and make the same amount of money for the same amount of effort." Because oh, top line, so this is what we've encountered. We've seen this before, right? In ads, well, you know, it's a very similar business model. So I'll I'll break it down like this. Imagine that your customer acquisition cost is $5 and your product cost $20, right? Great, $15 made per per sale. And it's like that as long as you spend $100, all right? You spend $100, customer acquisition cost is $5, which means you got 20 customers, mm-hmm. right? $15 profit off of each of those, right? So what's that? Two hundred, three hundred dollars, right? Yeah, three hundred dollars. So, but next, that next hundred customers, right? All of a sudden, your customer acquisition cost shot up to fifteen dollars. So now you're only making five dollars per customer. You're making more money because you're getting more sales. Like you're making more top line revenue, but it's more expensive. But now you're only getting five dollars per customer, which 
you customer acquisition costs 15. So dang, you only got four, five, six, really like six customers. Mm -hmm. All right. So you only made $30 on that second. Mm -hmm. you, you just made $300, right? Yeah. You made $300 on the next hundred dollars though. You only made $60 or did I say 30, $30. All right. So that's what artists are experiencing themselves. Hold up. What the fuck? I'll take that. Had to take a little quick break. Kept on getting a little phone call. But uh, what I was saying is, um, so that's what artists are experiencing. Is like, even if you're getting more and more sales, which feels great, you're making less money mm. per sale. Now you're working harder, right? Because you have to work harder to get more sales. Let's let's make that clear. Yeah. All right. Like I said, you spent $100 to make $300, but you still had to go put in the effort to spend that second hundred dollars, but you only made $30 yeah. and then you spend more and more money and less and less is made. And next thing you know, you're breaking even. So now I'm getting five times the sales, but I'm not making any money at all. Mm -hmm. That's what people are creeping towards. And that's why the frustration is so great. It's like, dang, like I can't work myself out of this hole. Yeah. A lot of times people are like, oh, we got to figure out how to work harder. We just grind, grind, grind. I'm going to dug it out. If you can't work yourself out of the hole because supplies have increased so much, that's a really, really frustrating place to be. So I do empathize with artists from that standpoint, for sure. And, you know, we, but we, we're seeing across everything. I just saw an article with um, about houses costing more, right? Especially to get some built, but then the supplies are lower quality, so people are getting houses built, but oh, yeah. more expensive. <laughs> yeah, houses. exactly. Yeah. More expensive for low quality stuff, and the houses are falling apart. So imagine that frustration. We're seeing it everywhere, man. And I can <laughs> the stress of I lost money in music. I usually go to touring and merch. Those are the two things, yeah. and both of those are now withering away. Where do you go from here? And right now, it seems the option for most artists is just like, just tread water, stay above water as long as possible until this phase goes. Right now, I think the biggest thing is, hey, bro, you got to go hard online. Yeah, It's content, content, and maintain your brand so when the moment opens up, you can cap as much as possible. Yeah, But you got to figure out how to make it through this phase, but you can't stop getting your brand out there, connecting with people online through content in general, private groups, live streams, whatever that looks like for you at your level. That's that's the only solution I see right now. Of course, we can do some math and come back with maybe another one on a future pod, but is there any I don't know solution that you see because I, I did wish he had some type of solution in mind. Yeah, same. I mean, I, I feel like you hit the nail on the head, man. Like, art is going to have to be a lot more digital savvy um, and look at building out the free components of, of or the free components of the top of the phone, pretty much. Like, yeah, you can keep doing these things that pay for these people to come. You know what the solution, solution looks like to get people over to your product for free. You're going to have to start doing it. And then, like I was saying earlier, but I, I really do think, like, long term, that art is going to have to start thinking more like, content creators and influencers um, and just look at, like you were saying, look at themselves as a Netflix, a Disney, a larger brand entity that's more so looking to build a, a, a big IP catalog necessarily more so than a major music career. That's, a, that's really, looks like, I don't think a lot of people are gonna like that, gonna wanna hear that, but that's, that's <laughs> where I see it going, bro. Music today is no different than any other piece of content we consume, yep. not, to, not to the consumer brain. Every yes. other piece of content is relatively inexpensive, bro. I can watch it damn near every movie in the world for nine ninety nine on Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So it's like if we as consumers are being trained to think that way about creative products, not even about the music industry, just about every other creative industry, it's naturally gonna trickle over to music. Music isn't any exception. You know what I'm saying? Like we wanna watch my movies on Netflix, log into Ticketmaster. Damn, they want three hundred dollars for this ticket. Damn, that's crazy. I don't know about that. You know what I'm saying? Like when I could maybe go to another artist I like and see, like, oh man, he's only selling, I don't know, tickets to his online show for eight dollars. Like I wasn't doing nothing tonight anyway. I throw this up on the TV while I'm while I'm you know eating dinner or some shit, right? Like I think it's gonna move into a lot more of these almost like low ticket, easy to put together offers that artists have to do, rather than like you said, they lean towards more with considered the high ticket, the, the concert tickets, the merch, the merch, the bundles, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and they use that to kind of like make up for it. And get a lot more into just fan nurturing and reselling, right? Like 
how many times have we heard just different business coaches talk about how many businesses lose money because they're not focused on their existing customers. They're always looking to bring new people back into the fold. It's like, yo, right. you, could, you could either go spend that $15 to bring in a new customer, or you could take that customer that you already spent $15 on and figure out how to set him, you know, instead of a $20 t-shirt, a, a $50, another $50 product, and another 50, another 50, another 50. So that way now it becomes, it costs you $15 to get a, a customer that spent $200 with you, right? And then, and then the margins look a little bit different. So. I don't think a lot of artists, a lot of artists don't tend to be fan focused, especially when it comes to monetization. They're usually more like new people. I need new people. I need I need to keep getting bigger. Right? I need more and more pre- more and more people to know about me. When in reality, you could flip it and be like, okay, maybe I'm not going to spend the money to get more people to know about me. I'm going to spend the money and time to figure out how to get the people that do know about me to spend more money on me. You know what I'm saying? Rather than trying to bring a new person to focus, right. only going buy a $20 t-shirt, you know what I'm saying? That might be where he stops because I haven't laid the groundwork for them to be upselled into things that make them more profitable as a customer. Yeah, man. Like you said, they don't want to hear that though. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're not going to hear that. But I think, you know, there's some some more solutions we can come yeah. with in a future pod as well. Time will tell. Um, like, but I think the movie model is the way to go with, yeah. with that. Yeah, but appreciate Laura for being the martyr that she is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, appreciate you throwing that out there. I just want to take a quick second and say thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about marketing and branding and blowing music up in the music industry from people who have done it and continue to do it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button before you click to the next video. Hit that subscribe button now.